Good morning, everyone. The video cut off. I think it might have been because of the song. The name of the song I was playing was called In Jesus' Name, and the song goes along with the devotional for this morning. The devotional this morning comes from Mark 9, 38 to 41. Thank you all for coming back on. You are a very fateful early riser community. Again, I'll say my name is Karen Cox. I'm a member of the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick, and the devotional is Mark 9, uh, verses 38 to 41. All right, here we go. Teacher said, John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. Okay, what's really at the heart of this passage? John is coming as the spokesman to tell Jesus the disciples saw someone setting people free from demon bondage. And it really, really bothered John and the other disciples that he did it by using the name of Jesus. John proceeds to tell Jesus we told him to stop. After all, he wasn't one of the chosen disciples. John's interest and question to Jesus didn't even focus on the people being set free. It was only on what the man did. John's priority was to report exactly what the man was doing and how the disciples handle the situation. I'm stopping because they're asking me to bring people in on the camera. Okay, I'll go back. Um, John's priority was to report exactly what the man was doing and how the disciples handled the situation. Why do you think that was John's priority? Were the disciples seeking praise from Jesus? Were they waiting for Jesus to say, well done, your actions were right? Or did they see the man as a threat to their, prior, their position? What's great about walking through the book of Mark with Pastor Cindy is we can quickly be reminded of what happened in the previous chapters. In chapters 9, verses 17 to 18, a man in the crowd said, Jesus, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes, seizes him, it throws him to the ground. It throws him to the ground and he foams at the mouth gnashing his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. So in front of a crowd, the disciples were unable to drive out demons. Yet now, they're trying to stop a man who is successfully casting out demons. The disciples said their main concern was he is using Jesus' name to do it. And in the disciples' eyes, it was without any type of authorization from Jesus. So the question is, was John and the other disciples trying to protect Jesus' name, or were they trying to protect their special role with Jesus? If we look back in verse 33, that was just read, I think, the other day, Jesus had just asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? 
but they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Just their argument alone showed their inward thoughts. John and the other disciples had made a mistake when they said, the man is not one of us. I don't recall Jesus saying, come and follow us. He said, come and follow me. When Jesus responded to John, do not stop him, it's probably not what he expected to hear. Jesus was showing his ministry would go beyond the 12 of them. Jesus makes it clear the man driving out demons is not an enemy. In fact, he was keeping with what concerned Jesus. The man might have heard or been in a crowd that observed Jesus freeing people from demons. Maybe, could it be he was the father who cried out to Jesus, I believe, but help my unbelief. And after watching his son be healed after so long and set free, he would have had the faith to use Jesus' name to heal people from that same condition. Well, whoever the man was, he knew something about Jesus. He knew something about Jesus, and he wanted what he knew to reach other people. He knew Jesus had the power and the authority to, to do miraculous healings. Jesus' healings might have never been seen by the people before. Think about it. Jesus healed paralyzed people. He had them walking. He cured leprosy. He, he uh, healed the sick and demon-possessed. A woman with an issue of blood was restored, and a child was raised from the dead. This man may not have been one of the 12 chosen disciples, but he moved in faith. That's the kind of faith that I want to keep close to me. There is a song with the lyrics that say, I've seen you work in others, Lord, and I want you to work in me. Now, Jesus wasn't physically there when the man was using his name, but we have the Holy Spirit living in us. Pastor Cindy told us earlier this week, our prayers can change the atmosphere wherever we go. Now, Jesus is aware of the man's motive, and he knows his motive is to work towards the good. The disciples miss it again. But do we always get what Jesus is doing or what he wants us to do? Jesus had to take the time to teach his disciples a very important lesson. Jesus needed his disciples to examine their motives and ask themselves why they had stopped the healings. He wanted the disciples to know what concerned the most to him. Their efforts to stop this man revealed a misunderstanding of what it meant that Jesus had come to share the gospel on this earth. The gospel of Jesus had to be preached and was for everyone. Jesus knew what the man did was extraordinary and beneficial. He wasn't using the name of Jesus, name in vain. Instead, he spoke the truth. There is something about the name of Jesus that changes situations. Why do we often say in Jesus' name when we pray? Because we, as believers, know when we come to God, it's through the love and sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. We have learned there is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus was calling the disciples also to change their vision and to be more inclusive. I think the disciples forgot that Jesus touched lepers, ate with tax collectors and sinners, and took little children into his arms. If the name of Jesus is being advanced, then the work is authentic and good. Are there times that our visions 
need to change? God has spoken a word to me through people that I thought needed a word from the Lord. And Jesus explains to the disciples, whoever is not against us is on our side. And that is a message we desperately need to hear in so many churches today. It seems that there are so many issues that are separating us from the work of the gospel. Christ is calling us to put aside petty differences and to respect each other as we work in his name. And I'm sure you can think of issues that divide followers of Christ and issues that are pushing away people that God so loves. In Ephesians 4, Paul wrote, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. There's one Lord, there's one faith, and one baptism. Stopping because it says bring people on camera. I'm going to read that again from Ephesians. There's one body, one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all in all. As Christians, that should be the scripture we all can agree upon. This world needs Christians united to fight forces of evil. The scripture for this devotional says, for whoever will give a cup of water to drink in my name, because you are Christ, most certainly I tell you, he will in no way lose his reward. Jesus calls us to love enemies and to help vulnerable people but his blessing here is directed to those who help Christians, those who are in Christ. Galatians 9, 10 says, so then, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to everyone, but especially to those who are, the house, who are of the household of faith. This world needs Christians when they don't show love to one another. What problems is it causing? Are we moving and advancing the name of Jesus? Hmm. What is God requiring of us? Jesus used something simple to offer in his name, a cup of water. We all need water to show even the smallest. We all need water. So to show people even the smallest gift is a blessing. People need food, clothing, financial aid, no matter what we do. It could be big or small, but let it be done in the name of Jesus. I want to share a prayer. It says, God of love, I pray that we always show love and exclude no one. Let us rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another. Let us not be arrogant, but associate with the lowly. I pray that we never are wise in our own eyes. And I pray that we do not repay evil for evil, but give thought to, to do what is honorable in the sight of all, if possible, so far as it depends on us. Let us live peacefully with all and help us to always demonstrate and include others within our church. Amen. And I wanna pray. Dear Lord, my Heavenly Father, I praise your holy name and I thank you this morning for your word, Lord God. And I, and I thank you that we can new, use the name of Jesus that there's power in that name. Lord God, I pray right now for those in our church family that are grieving right now. I pray in the name of Jesus that you comfort them, that they feel your presence in a mighty way. I pray for those who are sick right now and need healing. I pray in the name of Jesus 
that they will have a breakthrough, that they will receive healing. I pray in the name of Jesus for our church to continue to do the work that we are doing, feeding the community. I pray in the name of Jesus for all those who are on the call and will listen to this call to walk boldly in you and just, just walk and do your will, Lord. I pray all that in Jesus' name and just join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I apologize for what happened this morning. I think because of the music that I played, it cut off, but the name of the song was In the Name of Jesus. I know there was many people from the early Rise of Community that tried to get on this morning, and it says constantly bring them on camera. So I'm sorry if I didn't bring you on camera, but I'm sure you're going to be able to see this later on in today or tomorrow. And isn't it something? Because I was playing the, the song, In the Name of Jesus, it was tried to be blocked. But nothing, nothing is going to stop the power and the authority and the love of Jesus. Pastor Cindy always says, and I say it too, I love you. And God loves you too. Bye.